Today on the Photo Apps Podcast, getting model releases may not be fun, but they sure are important. And with easy release, they are definitely easy. Welcome to another episode of The App Show. I'm your host, Photo Joseph, and today I'm here with the guest, Robert Giro from Easy Release. Robert, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Joseph. Uh, thanks for having me on. Great to have you on. I've been using your product, Easy Release, for many, many years now, so it's kind of fun to have you on here and uh, and see if there's some new features I haven't caught on to yet, or maybe I'll even learn some new tricks, which is always a, a fun thing to get to do. So let's, sure. let's just uh, introduce our audience who may not be familiar with it, although the, the title does kind of give it away. Uh, what is Easy Release? So it's, um, it's an app for creating uh, model and property releases. Um, uh, it's, people confuse that with copyright releases, but that's not what it is. It's, it's to uh, release your likeness. Um, to, to, uh, it's a waiver on your rights to uh, profit from your likeness. So. Right, exactly. So it's something it's, very useful to stock photographers and uh, uh, mostly stock photographers, but anyone that's putting uh, using pictures in a commercial way. Yeah, essentially anybody who's going to profit <laughs> from the photo needs to have a release for the people in the picture and, as you pointed out, the property. Uh, some, if you're right. inside of a restaurant or bar and you're shooting in there and you have models in the restaurant or bar and you photograph them, you need releases not only of the people themselves, but also of of the property. So you have to find the owner of that property and make sure that you have permission from him. And this is a really important thing because if people don't have releases, legally you cannot use it. And if you get caught using it, you could end up owing all of your profits back to the model um, and then some. It depends on how good their lawyer is. So it's not, it's one of those things that's not worth screwing around with. Now it's also worth pointing out and, and you can talk to this, I'm sure, when you don't need a model release. So if I'm out shooting on the streets, and I'm in public and I'm photographing people and I'm gonna use them on my blog, do I need a model release? The answer is? Yeah, generally not for editorial purposes, uh, for your own uh, personal use and for, um, there's a little bit of a gray area there that's not fully been tested. Uh, For example, editorial use when it's the cover, like a cover of a magazine or something, people consider that advertising because it's what sells the magazine. So covers generally people, uh, even in editorial world, like to get releases for those. But, um, you know, for, for your personal use on your blog, it again, it depends. If you're making money off your blog, there's some gray area there too. At the end of the day, it's just uh, better to protect yourself. Sure. But, uh, but certainly there's a lot of, you know, there's a whole world of people using pictures without uh, model releases. Yeah. Uh, but- General wisdom, of course, is to always always get one. So, sure. what what inspired you to create this app? Are you a photographer? Um, yeah, well, I was, um, and I guess some say you're always a, once a photographer, always a photographer. But uh, I haven't done it for a living in uh, in quite a while. But uh, I, I was a professional photographer from uh, I would say the mid late '80s to uh, to uh, early 2000s. Okay, um, I worked for Getty Images. I worked for Newsweek magazine and a few other places so okay uh mostly editorial photography i was a photojournalist but when i ended up at getty uh that's when i sort of learned about model releases and the importance of them and it was sort of a big <clears throat> hassle for them and uh it occurred to me uh pretty early on that this was uh, something that could be done on a mobile device mm-hmm. uh, quite well um, and in fact the idea came to me before iOS came about before iPhones. <laughs> uh, HP had this iPack device with a biometric fingerprint scanner, and I thought that was as good as a signature. And uh, of course, Getty wasn't interested in developing something like that for such a one-off device. Sure. And uh, anyhow, the iPhone was the obviously the perfect uh, vehicle. So, how uh, long ago that. did you first uh, first start working on Easy Release then? Uh, very end of 2009, okay. uh, late 2009, I started putting the uh, idea on paper. I'd, I had the idea on paper from way back, but I was, I'd left Getty and uh, looking for something uh, to do other than the freelance work I was doing. And uh, I thought this would be a good time to do this app. And at the, when I first started working on it, there weren't any competitors doing it, which was a kind of a rare thing to come up with an idea. Sure. There's nothing, you know. 
uh, that doesn't exist on the App Store yet. So it was fairly early on, and uh, I partnered with another guy, and we we got it going. Uh, it took you know several months of development and uh, a lot of meetings with Getty. I wanted to build it to their spec, to their requirements. Uh, that I figured if good enough for them, good enough for everyone else. I used their language. I used their okay. translations. We launched it, I think, with uh, six languages. Oh wow. Um, Okay. So uh, at the time we launched, there were a couple of competitors, uh, a couple of them that aren't around anymore, some that still are. But we always had a lot more features and uh, um, and also more ex industry acceptance. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, all all the stock photo agencies sort of uh, decided that that it was appropriate for their contributors to use nice. these release. And I think it's worth pointing out that you can customize the language that's in the release. So if you want to completely start from scratch, right, you can... Yeah, uh, the built-in stuff is all sort of industry standard language, uh, but it's pretty bulletproof and a bit daunting. Uh, it might be a little too heavy for right. <laughs> for some purposes. Sure, so, sure. Uh, and, and even I've heard people doing wedding contracts and uh, TFCDs and uh, things like that. Uh, TFPs. Um, I don't know Why don't you explain what those are for anyone who's not so so, so time time for prints. Uh, they're just exchange agreements. Like yeah. um, one market I didn't hadn't thought of uh, when this uh, went out. I was just thinking stock photographers mm -hmm. and, and maybe a few other. But uh, I started getting contacted a lot by people who were uh, model photographers um, uh, from Model Mayhem. I'd never heard of it, and I was being contacted <laughs> by these guys, and I uh, went to see the site, and I'm like, oh, yeah, makes perfect sense. Sure. Uh, these guys wanted to secure permission uh, from their models, because sometimes, you know, boudoir photography, things like that, it's a little a little risque, and uh, um, they wanted to make sure that, that you know, things were legit and kosher, and so um, we also added uh, uh, 22, what is it, 2257 compliance. It's this ordinance where <laughs> photographers shooting models or people in the adult industry. Um, it's <laughs> all right. So you got twenty two fifty seven compliance. To <laughs> if people know what that is, then you've got it. If yeah, you know what it is, yeah. you probably don't need to know. <laughs> exactly. All right, exactly. It just allows for um, uh, more model information, basically. Okay. okay. So the whole purpose of the app is to very quickly and easily, hence the name, easy, generate a model or property release on the go where you are, hand over your phone and let the model read and sign right. it. Right, which is yeah, all great. That's, that's another concept I hadn't thought of um, that, uh, believe it or not, when it came, I'd never thought that people would be handing this to the model to use. Oh. I, I thought they would be doing it themselves. So, uh, just because it's um, it's a little bit involved. And but on the other hand, it's, it is certainly doable because people seem to be, I think the majority of people are doing that. They're busy shooting and they hand it sure. off to someone. Um, sometimes an assistant, but uh, yeah, I guess sure. often it's just the model. And I guess people that model a lot have gotten used to it now. We've been around since 2010, so. Yeah, well, and everybody uh, uses one of these. So you hand a phone to right. someone, they all know how to type in their name and email. And it frankly, is it's faster intuitive. for them to do it, uh, for them to sure. type in their own info than for them to say it to you, spell it to you, you type it, yeah, then show sure. it to them, is this right? So yeah, I think that's sure. totally legit. Right on. So, okay, so we've got an iOS app. Is it available on, it must be available on another platform because I see a little green uh, little Yeah, green a little you. green robot. Uh, Although it's, it's actually it's on not Android. Android. that our audience sees, but go ahead, sorry. <laughs> um, it's on Android as well. Uh, we came out the Android version probably six, eight months later. Um, it the Android version is um, has the it's the sort of basic feature set. It doesn't have the advanced uh, customization pro pack that you can buy on iOS, okay. and it doesn't have the uh, multi-page feature, um, and has fewer languages. Okay, but basically it's the same thing. And uh, okay, so it's on it's iOS, on it's on iPhone and on iPad, correct? Optimized for both. Yeah, iPhone, iPad. Okay. And then any iOS device, even I, uh, iPod Touch. Okay, great. And then you mentioned that that on the Android one, it didn't have certain add-on packs that you can buy in. So that's a great lead into the price question. What does it cost? And since you mentioned add-ons, what can you add to it? So the base app is nine ninety nine. Um, the add-ons, uh, there's a pro pack that allows for that twenty two fifty seven compliance. Uh, it it adds custom fields. Um, Sort of, you can you can make custom releases with the standard app, 
um, but there's extra features you can unlock in the app uh, uh, to extend the customization. Multiple mm -hmm. branding, so that you can have multiple brands in the app. Um, what else is in there? The multi-page feature is uh, something a lot of people ask for. Typically, releases are one page. Mm -hmm. If you can't get it in a page, I mean, who's going to stand there reading it? You're typically, <laughs> right. reading this from people off the street and things like that. So. Uh, beyond a page, a one-page contract, it seemed counterintuitive that you could get somebody to not have their lawyer peruse it first. Right. But uh, right. people wanted it. We got a lot of demand for that. Um, mostly, I think it was wedding photographers that have multiple-page wedding contracts that mm -hmm. are sort of all-encompassing contracts and a model release and all kinds of other things. Okay. Uh, so they wanted custom fields and they wanted multiple pages. Makes sense. It makes sense. And the yeah, the custom fields, that's something I've used quite a bit. So I've... Uh, like for example, on a shoot where I'm going to be approaching people on the streets to take their pictures, but I need a commercial release because I'm using it commercially. Sometimes people want some money, sometimes they don't. And so I had, I have multiple releases set up, one that's a paid and one that's not. And if I tap the paid one, then it would ask how much I paid them in my, in the form of filling it out. So I could put in, right. you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever. And then that became my receipt. So I have my cash receipt there. They've signed sure. it. Now I've got that as a, one. Uh, for the yeah. taxes. So yeah, lots of great uses of the custom fields. Okay. Yep. All right. So in uh, and the, and the add-on pack, how much is that one? Uh, I believe one of them is two ninety nine. Or do you know off the top of your head? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's one ninety nine for the multi page and uh, two ninety nine. Don't hold me to this. Uh, well, here I'll. I'll pull. I don't look at that all the time. Yeah, no, <laughs> so I don't remember. Enough. But I, I think it's two ninety nine or. I think it's two ninety nine for the, uh, the the feature bundle, and then one ninety nine for the uh, um, multi page. All right, here we go. Let's go. Uh, top in app purchases, advanced custom pro pack three ninety nine, multi page releases one ninety nine. There you go. All right, I almost gave a discount there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you said nine ninety nine. You don't see the original price here because I already own it, so it doesn't come right. on the show. But right. fantastic. Okay. Well, very affordable. Clearly, one of these things that if you're doing releases, you got to have a system like this. The, the days of having a stack of these things printed out on paper that you hand over and sign are marginally antiquated. So having yep. this having this available is fantastic. And and you're going to show us the features in here and the ability to set up a release, to create a release, and even have the picture of the person is super quick and easy to do. So with that, I think we're just going to jump into the demo. Is there anything else you want to mention or talk about before we do that? Uh, no. All no, right. I think... Um, well, in that case, let's go. see what this thing is. All right, so the main screen um, where you can, um, basically this is where you, the, your starting point, uh, all, your, all your previously done releases are in here. You can sort by date, uh, by name, date. Oh, all my data is test data, this is all sure. uh, not, not real. Um, you can arrange by shoot. When you're sorted by shoot or by date, you can send, uh, there's a batch send feature here. I don't know if you see in the gray bar where it says the shoot name mm -hmm. uh, at the top, beach blanket, bingo. There's that little arrow and you can send uh, a batch uh, in one email. So that's great. this is a useful little shortcut. And that's only available by date or by shoot. Uh, yeah. If you're in by status, you don't have that little arrow. Makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to hit the little, uh, at the bottom right, the little gears icon. And go to the settings. Um, I'm going to scroll down to show you some new features we just added. Um, you know, I could actually see better. <laughs> so um, one of the big things we added this time uh, is save say on an automatic save to uh, of the PDFs to um, to Dropbox, and once that's enabled, uh, mine's already enabled. If you, basically it would pop up uh, the the there's a login screen that pops up for Dropbox, and people have asked about the security of that, and it's it's not our screen. It's it's actually Dropbox. Of course, right. we're just calling that up through Apple's APIs, right. and. Um, so it's it's very secure. We don't we can't intercept that. In fact, that's part of the greatness of the iOS platform is that Apple makes sure we can't get to that. Right. That's when we go through the App Store review process. They that's the first thing they check mm. is are you cheating anyone <laughs> right. in some way. So right, it's right. it's very secure. Good. Um, and what that does when you enable that is all the PDFs are then stored. This is my Dropbox app I just switched to. 
Um, it'll create an apps folder, which if you don't already have one, and then uh, an easy release folder inside of there. And then uh, all your uh, PDFs will um, be available Great. in here. And this is primarily as a backup because we, uh, the app itself is gonna store the model release. Right, uh, <clears throat> so yeah. the, you know, a, a mobile device is not secure storage. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, if you lose it, <laughs> if you were to lose the device or damage it, drop it in the water, sure. you wouldn't want to lose uh, valuable contracts that uh, potentially are your lifeblood if you're a stock right. photographer. So you want to get things, you know, it's one thing to have it on the device, but you need it in multiple places for uh, secure data storage. Absolutely. So if you're using iCloud, it, it'll also save the PDFs automatically to an iCloud drive. Um, so, and that's what it looks like here. You get a little easy release folder in iCloud Drive. Great. And same thing, you've got all your PDFs. So it's there. gonna, as soon as you generate the, the release, it's gonna automatically upload to both iCloud and Dropbox, exactly. assuming you have them both enabled. Yeah, so you got redundancy, right. that's fantastic. And it, um, of course, some people are using this without internet connectivity. Right. Um, travel photographers sometimes are in very remote locations sure. and there's no Wi-Fi or anything. So uh, it, it, it'll, it'll create the PDFs locally, queue them up for uh, for iCloud and, and for Dropbox, and the next time you run the app while connected, it'll um, okay. drop the That's PDFs. Great. great to know. Is there any indicator on there of X number of documents have not been backed up, just so you're aware? There is no, uh, there is none. Okay. Um, there's no indication of that, but that's a good idea, actually. Okay, uh, good. Thanks for that, Joseph. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we'll think about that for a future. Uh, no one's ever asked for it. We tend to sort of, uh, we get a lot of requests for features. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the majority of the features were, that are requested are things that already exist in the app, ah. believe it or not, uh, that people haven't found. It's Great. surprisingly complex. There's quite a lot going on in here. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the basic usage of it is is simple, but there's little nooks and crannies of features of that, that if you don't play around with it, you won't necessarily find them. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, that's always the way. There's always extra sure. features people aren't aware of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of stuff in there. And like you said, all, you know, people are requesting things and you're adding features that people do request. Um, and in this case, I think it could be useful for that situation where you're out and about. It's just, just awareness, just so you know. Okay, sure. I know that. I mean, I the app is pretty it. mature right now. Well, you know, it's been out since 2010. So, and you know, apps, the best apps in my mind are one trick ponies in a sense. They mm -hmm. do one thing really well. Sure. And that's what we've tried to do. We, yep. You know, we've had requests for all kinds of things, you know, manage your whole photography business. Well, mm. that's another app. Sure. You know, that's not, I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd want to start bolting endless yep. amounts of features on this. It becomes unusable. Fair enough. So. That's great. All right. Um, all right, so I'm going to walk through uh, the wizard because this actually there's some confusion. I've seen demos online. We've never recorded a demo, which but we should. We can talk about that. Now. <laughs> 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 but um, I, you know, I've seen people sort of make mistakes while demoing the app, and uh, so oh, I funny. just want to run through the wizard real quick. Okay. Um, so that I hit that plus at the top uh, right hand corner, um, and then you choose model or property. We'll go to model. Now this screen is uh, creates confusion. I think this, the the it defaults to whatever you've set as your default release type here, and it, right now it's mine is the standard release is okay. the default. But you can this is where you could pick uh, one of your custom releases right. um, if you wanted to. Um, and this is the point where I wouldn't be handing this to the model here. Right. I would I would start the wizard going, uh, hit whatever release type you want, and then maybe at this point. Uh, or even at this point, I probably have the shoot information. Um, we, we have these buttons on a lot of these screens called select from list. So if you've already used something, um, and we'll say this, we're still on uh, beach blanket bingo shoot. Um, again, I would pick this as a photographer or the assistant, I would do this myself and maybe only hand over the app at this point where sure. it's model information. Um, but again, a lot of people are reusing models over and over again, uh, whether they're stock photographers or model mayhem guys, they tend to have a, 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 sh a small list of, sure. of people they work with all the time. And, and so this is a, you know, you can go very, very quickly um, 
through the app when you're picking from a list of previously uh, used things. Abe Lincoln's always uh, the guy I like to witness. Now, uh, <laughs> a question on witnessing there, because I, I think I discovered at some point you can disable, there's a checkbox in the settings, right, to disable the need for a witness? Um, yes, that's part of the custom features. Now, some people don't use uh, witnesses at all. So, um, is there any legal implication to that? Do you are you supposed to it, have a witness? You know, it's not. There's no hard and fast requirements there. It's whatever whatever your stock photo agency is comfortable with. Okay. If you're not with a stock photo agency, then it's whatever you're comfortable with or whatever your lawyer is comfortable with. <laughs> um, and that varies. Yeah. You know? A lot, so uh, we we put it in as a feature because I think I believe Getty uh, required it. Okay, I'm I can't speak for them in any way. I don't. Uh, you'd have to double check with them if they still require it, um, but I believe they used to. Okay, I would, so it was one of those things when I found that I could turn that off that made me happy because always sure. you know, sometimes you don't have a witness and I, for yeah. the stuff I was doing it just didn't seem and, necessary. And, and a lot of people think too that they have to put something there. You can always hit the next button. You know, if you don't want to turn it off, um, okay. because I believe you have to buy the Pro Pack to turn that off. But if you don't want to turn it off, you can just hit next. Mm. You know, hit next through anything you don't want to. If you don't want to, put okay. An so address, that's not going to be one of those required fields that, uh, like Very the signatures, few obviously things required. are required. So, okay. Right. Right. And it Very won't even let you generate required. the PDF if it's not already. Uh, the model uh, name is required. Kind the of important. address is not. The email's not. The uh, the emails. I, I think the email might be required actually, but. Um, you know, you have you need a way of contacting them, so there has to be some form of contact sure. information. Um, again, you know what 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 we there'll be it'll tell you when there's information missing, but it doesn't require you to add. Very few things are required. Okay. Uh, and so people also sometimes ask why is there gender and ethnicity and all that. These are questions the stock photo agencies want answered. Mm -hmm. um, Particularly, uh, the ethnicity thing is 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 just how marketing does their targeting. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and and this is absolutely something the model has to self-identify. You know, it's it shouldn't be the photographer passing judgment to here on what uh, okay. ethnicity you are. You, the model self-selects here, or, and or optionally doesn't put anything there. So, and that's worth if you're going to hand it over, you can say all I need is your. You know, name and email address and you can feel free to put anything right. else in there or if you need something more you just tell them you know. right another thing that uh, actually comes up quite a lot um people are asking how you know how come there's no minor model release and it's or, or how do you create a minor model release and and the thing is an easy release it's automatic there's no uh, uh differentiation between the two it it's uh, it calculates your age and um the way it works is that um if 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 you're under 18, you're automatically a minor uh, anywhere in the world. But if you're between 18 and 25, it suggests that you might need a, par a parent parental signature, um, but doesn't require one. Hmm. Um, and then uh, if you're an adult, obviously it doesn't offer the parent prompt. And you don't even uh, have to put in the birth date here, right? If you just tap on the adult. You can, right. So this is, um, these are mutually exclusive options. Another area of confusion, uh, people think they can put in the date and then hit adult. Uh, you should put in the date and hit save <laughs> if you want the date. Uh, but if you hit adult, you will blank out the date and just be generically an adult. Right. Bit of a problem. So, um, will in the future add a lock to this feature so mm. that you can't because there are people who absolutely require a date but then models tend to put the date and hit the adult button i see i see and that just killed the date so got um, it the the only reason the adult button's there is for we had some photographers complaining that their models of a certain age didn't like sharing their um, birth date <laughs> sharing their birth date but they were obviously adults and right and so uh but basically, you should stick to putting birth dates. Uh, it's a little better for from a sure. legal perspective. Okay. Um, and then hit save on that. Um, what else is confusion here? So. Well, and then you can take a picture. Now, here you've loaded up a pre existing model. Right. I, I, I unfortunately went through the contact, the uh, previously used, so it was a shortcut. But I can at any point here uh, edit any of this stuff. Um, right, and it's, I think it's worth saying too. If you haven't, if you're not using a pre-existing one, then you can 
when you go through the cycle, <laughs> now everybody knows you're on a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, go through the, the process, you've you selected, uh, you get to the field where you put in the model's name and you just hand it over. They type in their name and they hit next and it's gonna prompt through all these things. And then at some point it prompts for the picture and right. they can selfie it or hand it back to you or whatever. Sure. You can also load from, um, there are photographers who are using, um, who are basically during a shoot, um, sending some of their pictures to their device sure. into a folder. Uh, they're tethered, for example, and they'll send right. sort of whatever they want to use as the ID picture. And so they'll have a, a picture from the shoot uh, in the device. Absolutely. But there's as many ways to do that as there are photographers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that brings and then, us to the uh, The model signature part. Um, again, here, the, the scroll down button at the bottom auto scrolls. I don't know if everyone knows that. Um, I think some people sort of scroll it with their finger. That's what people are used to, just scroll. Right. Um, but you can also hit the button, it'll sc it'll scroll a screen at a time. And then when you get to the bottom, um, you can sign with your finger. And if you're Done. using the iPad, and I know that because I've done this, if you're using the iPad and you have the, or the iPad Pro and you have the Apple Pencil, then you can sign with that, which is uh, sure. which is really nice. You can nice. use a stylus or the uh, the iPad Pro's pencil yeah. or just your finger. Great. Um, the model, uh, the witness. And now, at this point, uh, a feature we added is that we automatically create the PDF at this step. Uh, in the past, you had to sort of uh, hit this uh, created button to uh oh, okay so that that's happen. all right so that's been created at this point right because i recall it's been a few months or, or more since i've used it so it used yeah. to have to tap the create and it would say not ready to create if it didn't have the signatures right right and so now uh as soon as the last signature is applied the witness signature uh it's created okay at so at that point, point it's created and uploaded to your iCloud and dropbox exactly it's fantastic um you can also at this point send it by email uh, tap here to send you model both. That's great. Um, there's a, a setting for BCC if you want to add multiple email accounts. Right, if you want to add your producer or something to it. I did that on a shoot right. where we wanted to make sure we're using multiple devices to get releases. We want to make sure they all ended up in the same place. So we just BCC'd one account and then they all got emailed to there. Right. So you can delete the release down here with the delete button and you can report a bug that's specific to this release. Um, from here. Uh, if you have an issue with a particular release, if you send us uh, a bug report via this button at the bottom, we'll get um, the PDF attached and, uh, and basically the diagnostics data. That's um, so that's, Good. I guess, useful to know if, should something go wrong. Very good. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It is. It's nice. You see, but, you select select your basic release. I mean, at the most basic, if you're not going to do any customization, all you got to do is yep. tap that that standard release or what it was called. Yep. Punch in a couple of pieces of info, hand it to the model, let them punch in the rest. That's right. Sign um, it, it. You know, if you know, uh, because we can import from contacts, uh, it's it's it, it can be really useful to have the model send you their contact information ahead of time. You sure. add it to your address book via V card or something like that, and. Um, Again, you can sort of import that contact information really quickly instead of typing addresses and phone numbers and emails. Right, absolutely. It'll import all that all at once. Now, that actually reminds me of a time. question that I've had in the past. Um, so you've got, in this case, you're preloading the work by having them send you the info. But I want to preload the work by sending them the contract so they can read it. So they're not sitting there feeling under pressure. Oh, my God, i got to read this big thing. Or, oh, I don't have my right. lawyer here, whatever. So what's, other than sending them a uh, release that you signed with somebody else, What's the easiest way to just send them this agreement by email so they can just look at it before they even come I, to the set? I would just, you could, I mean, send them a test version. You can create, uh, just like every single one of my releases here are tests, you can just uh, create a release, um, even for, for that matter, create a model release and keep hitting next and put nothing in it and, and uh, output the PDF. Uh, can even cancel that. Right, and now uh, at this point I can create it and it's just generic and blank. Oh, so even though it said, go back, hit the cancel button. When you scroll back up to the top. Not ready to sign. Right, not ready to sign, but you can still create the PDF at this point. Sure. Okay. It's completely blank. Um, 
you know, there's no, uh, uh, there's no one's personal information in it. You can also email it. And the, okay, so even there, when you hit tap to send, it's generating the PDF with the blank fields right. in it, and it's opening up an email, so you can just type in the email address of whoever you right. want to go to. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, I think that maybe I hadn't realized that before because of this misunderstanding that you have to fill in every field. Yeah. You can't just go next, next, the next, have thrown. The other thing, if you wanted to sort of preview the language or something uh, without sending the whole PDF, it's fine to send the whole PDF, but I can go in the settings here again and go to the um, this release legal text defaults section, uh, model standard. If I hit that little I here, I get the, I get the, the text mm -hmm. of the standard text and I can add that to the clipboard by touching copy. Sure. Now I can paste that in an email and say, this is the verbiage of right. our standard release. Right, right. But I could also do that in any, uh, in any of the custom ones. Hit the text, this, this is sample data obviously. So um, same thing here, I could uh, uh, select all, copy, and uh, send that in an email. Got it. Okay. Very good. Would you want to talk about some of the customization capabilities, either those custom text fields that you have in there? Sure. Um, so when you let's, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do a we'll. So there's a couple of ways to create a, a custom release. So I'm going to back out of here and start from the beginning. Uh, from the main screen, you hit the little gears at the bottom uh, right, and you scroll down to the release legal text defaults, and we'll say we're going to make a custom model release now. Um, I'm going to touch where it says model standard. It brings you into your versions um, list uh, where you have standard and all your custom ones, uh, which I have quite a few custom ones here already defined. But we'll it, so you have to at this point the decision is do I do you want to make one that's based on the standard release? You want to start, use that as a starting point, mm -hmm. or do you want to start from nothing? Okay. If you if if you want to start from nothing, you hit the plus at the top left. If you want to use the standard one as the starting point, you just want to edit some of the language, uh, then you would we'll, we'll hit the I on the standard one, and you hit duplicate. Got it. Now that this now has created a new custom version based on the standard one. It has all the language. Um, it has all the language in here of the standard release, which you could. Sorry about that. Scrolling fast. That's probably that's <laughs> making people dizzy. Um, so at that point, you could edit this language um, and uh, also edit the features here. So the name of the release is how, how it'll appear in the list. Mm -hmm. It's really important to make things really obvious here sure. because th you'll confuse yourself if you have too many things called standard one, standard two, <laughs> standard three. You, you'll have no idea. So it's, you have to be very descriptive here. Um, and the title, this is what appears at the top of the release, right above the legal text, in bold and large-ish uh, letters. So here too, you can. Some people change that to appearance release, mm. the uh, the pers person release, uh, things like that. So um, you can also change this sort of uh, standard branding that's applied to this release version. So you could create a bunch of copies of releases that do nothing but just change the branding so you don't have to pick. Uh, and that's for, what is what is the use of the branding uh, and the multiple branding icons? In branding, there? like um, oh, this was something that was requested by, uh, we always had the capability of, of putting a branding so you could have a logo and your okay. website uh, URL and all that. But a lot of people then said, well, you know, I work for other photographers sometimes. Um, where I, they want their logo on it, or I work for a pr production company that does three or four different TV shows, and they want the the, the sort of marketing uh, stuff from that particular show uh, on there. So for whatever reason, you know, okay. some photographers have a wedding business and a portrait business, and a, and they do uh, travel photography, and they might have different logos and things like that for. Okay. Uh, so it's just more flexible. Okay, makes sense. Um, optional fields, this is what, what you were talking about earlier. Uh, this is where you can turn off mm -hmm. uh, the gender question, the ethnicity question, turn off witness. Um, you can add uh, compensation. So this this is that uh, 2257 compliance. It adds uh, compensation, uh, tax ID, social security number, 
and um, other names for people that have aliases. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, things like that. So, Understood. Okay. Oh, here's the other name. Sorry. That's that one. Other names are the top. These, these two names things names here are, are, are for 2257. Okay. Um, layout, multi-page or single page. Again, that's a an option you have to purchase. If you try to use any feature that's part of a uh, an add-on, it'll prompt you then to buy that sure. feature. So it's 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 not that the features are always built in. They're just you're unlocking them mm -hmm. by buying them. Right. Um, the other pe sometimes the connection to the app store is disconnected on your app, and you you'll get prompted to buy something again, even though you already own it. There's no worry there. You won't get charged twice. Right. It'll it's just it's just checking your purchases. Um, this is this is an app store API thing that we have no control over, sure. but we get questions about it all the time. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and of course, the legal text here that you can you and just edit. edit that if you need to. Yeah. Right. And now the placeholders. That's a really interesting, yeah, quite advanced feature. Yes, that's where you have where you can insert any of the field data. Um, for example, photographer name. I just didn't, I'm gonna put a little space there. So, so that is a placeholder for any of the data that you acquired in the app, and it'll it'll place that in in the contract in line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you haven't already, if you add a field in here or a placeholder here that you You're, aren't asking for, and that means it's going to pop up in the wizard, right, to ask you for that data. Right. The um, custom fields, um, these are all the wizard fields plus any custom fields that you've uh, defined. Um, I don't have any defined in here. And that I think is how I did the money one. I, I don't know if it, the payment and social security number thing for the whatever number compliance, is that a new feature or has that been in there for a while and I just missed it? Because I do have the full full pro pack here. Mm. It's it's not new. You okay. might have missed it. I must have missed um, it because I know that I went in and I custom created fields, one. Optional fields, compensation. Yeah, I created my own custom one for compensation. So okay. right, um, that's uh, using this one uh, is is good actually because it it'll be in the wizard um, placeholder. Where is it? Compensation. Compensation amount. Boom. So you say I was paid compensation amount. Yeah, for this. you would you would sort of. Uh, sort of put a label there. Right. Nice. Okay. And, and then that data appears yep. right there. Great. All Once right. It's done. So, um, and you can designate uh, the default choice um, just by tapping right. on the on the option here and it'll yep. be that one we just created, standard one, which is a terrible name <laughs> <laughs> that you should have changed. But, Very good. Um, but it's okay. kind of standard. And um, multiple branding here, you can add new brandings, logos, company. Uh, usually uh, the contact information I recommend is just a website URL uh, or the contact page on your website. Okay. Because your website URL is less likely to change than your address or phone number. Or, yep, fair enough. Very good. Well, again, easy, robust, has the features that you need. I love the new ability to have it uh, generate that PDF and put it up in Dropbox and iCloud right away. That's that's yep. super. And then you can even obviously just go into those either of those apps and email that release from there if for whatever Absolutely. reason you can't get to this or it's not there, whatever. It's, you've got the options and that's the that's sure. good. That's a very good thing to have. Okay, cool. I think I think that's everything you wanted to show, right? Was there another feature you wanted to sneak um, in here? Mm. No, I think that's it. Okay. That's it. All right. Very good. good. Well, thanks for that. That's uh, it's great. Like I said, I've been using this app for years. It's really fun to see it uh, get in there. And I did learn a couple things that I didn't know were in there. So that's very good. Very helpful. And for anyone who out there who is uh, needing model releases, this is absolutely an easy, easy way to do it, as the name implies. So thanks again for showing really that like to us. I appreciate so. it. Oh, Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we've got a, the next section of this little podcast of ours is uh, to ask you to pick your favorite app. We always ask our guests to pick their favorite photo related okay. app, <laughs> but the only, the only qualifiers uh, it cannot you know, I, be. I, I have a lot of, I use, people are 
astonished when they see the amount of apps on my phone. Sure. But um, uh, I, I, I've, I've always, I, one of the things I use a lot uh, is uh, the photographer's F ephemeris. Ephemer kind of ephemeris. Yeah. <laughs> ephemeris. Ephemeris. There you go. Um, it, it's, uh, it's for um, finding sunrise, sunset, uh, moonrise, moonset yep. uh, in a particular uh, location. Um, what time it's going to occur and, and things like that. It's, it's, it's a little complex to use, uh, but once you get used to it, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, it'll uh, um, give you a ton of information. It's, it's great for landscape photographers uh, when you're trying to get the moon in your picture uh, at a particular location, um, you know, right. Assuming it, it's physically possible for that to occur. <laughs> so you can um, figure out when it's going to be somewhere. I've used yeah. apps like this before. I, I don't own this one. Uh, there are a few like it. I yeah. think this was the original. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's really powerful to be able to stand somewhere where, you know, okay, I want to shoot the sunrise from yep. here and I want to make sure I want to get the sun coming up over them or where is the sun so I can right. look and see where it's going to be and okay, yeah. I'm going to need to stand here to get the sun where I want I've, it yeah I, I, I've sort of set calendar appointments for myself based on where the sunrise or sunset's going to be or, or moonrise or moonset's going to be in a particular location where I thought this would be a really great picture if the moon were here okay uh, and so when is the moon going to be here and then I'll put myself a calendar appointment to remind me to go shoot that oh how cool yeah that's great. You know, I mean, because obviously it could be months away, right? Uh, uh, if if ever, but it could be months away. So, um, okay, you know, super. Well, that's a great app. Yeah. Thank you. I don't think anyone has uh, picked that one up on the show before. So that's a oh, great recommendation. Go. Thanks. And we'll uh, for anybody who's uh, watching or just listening to this, we'll stick links to all of these in the show notes as well, of course. All righty, Robert. Well, that does bring us to the end of the show thank you so much for coming on where can thank, people thanks go thanks so much for having me absolutely where can people go to learn more about Easy Release and uh, anything else you might want to throw their way uh, easyreleaseapp.com okay. or applicationgap.com uh, which is the sort of company's name is that okay um, are there any other apps under application gap not 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 currently okay. um, the idea was uh, uh, to have an app company and, and multiple apps sure. but uh, uh, we've been busy with other things so. fair enough Fair enough. Well, easyreleaseapp.com, that's probably the best one to go to. And it looks like you've got a Facebook page, Easy Release, and Twitter, Easy Release, as well. Yep. Very good. Yep. Is that, uh, if people have quick questions, or are you fairly responsive on Twitter if they're out in the field and they got a quickie, can they um, tweet you? Yeah, absolutely. Twitter, I not my favorite uh, platform for conversation. Sure. Um, we, we prefer to just get an email um, because then it's unlimited. You know, yep. Some of the answers can be lengthy like people <laughs> like to be walked through step by step and yeah and we're ready to provide that level of uh help to people Good. so sometimes i get asked these open-ended questions on twitter and i, I can't answer you in, in uh, you know 140 characters <laughs> so <laughs> no i, I tend to recommend email um uh, and there's a contact form on our website uh, uh that allows you to contact us very good there very good. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on. So that does bring us to the end of another episode right. of the Apps Podcast. Appreciate all of you who are watching or listening today. It is fantastic to have you on here. Thanks again. So that uh, that's it. I'm your host, Photo Joseph. You can find me on the socials at Photo Joseph and uh, also check out my other website, photoapps.expert. So with that, it is time to put the lens cap back on and go edit some photos. <laughs>